Nintendo's lovable puffball returns to dish out cuteness and do damage to my man card yet again in Kirby and the Rainbow Curse for the Nintendo Wii U. Oh Kirby, why must you be so gosh darned adorable? Because you can be, that's why. Once again, Dreamland, which is starting to sound not quite as dreamy as its name implies, finds itself besieged by the latest in this regular series of unfortunate events. This one happens to rob the world of its color and freezes Kirby in a nearby Waddle Dee, that is, until a besieged paintbrush fairy frees both of them. No, I'm not just making stuff up or indulging in questionable self-medication. Anyway, the tale surrounding magical paintbrush Aline and the artist gone bad Klaisha is a story that's par for the course for the Kirby franchise, which doesn't really feature powerful narratives but relies on cute storytelling that unfolds like a children's storybook instead. The storybook feel is further enhanced by the claymation style that's used for the game's graphic presentation, providing a nice change of pace visually. The musical score, meanwhile, adds to the game's playful mood. As far as its game mechanics go, Nintendo dusts up the gameplay from 2005's Kirby Canvas Curse. Instead of controlling Kirby directly like a traditional platformer, Canvas Curse relied on the use of the stylus and touchscreen to create a path for the beloved Star Warrior to roll onto. Think of it as controlling a roller coaster, except smaller. And pinker. <laughs> Did I mention that Kirby is also adorable? <laughs> Oops, I think my man card just jumped out of my wallet and started running for dear life. It's the same control scheme now used by Rainbow Curse, except on the larger Wii U tablet. For the most part, it works quite well. Drawing a path lets Kirby move in the direction that you scribbled on the screen, allowing you to avoid or go over obstacles, as well as reach items such as fruits and stars. Tapping on Kirby, meanwhile, lets him tap into his inner blast processing and do a rolling dash to attack fairs or move faster. Gather 100 stars and touching and holding the stylus on Kirby also allows him to grow in size and do a power dash that covers a larger area and can destroy previously indestructible barriers. Despite the different controls, Rainbow Curse remains a Kirby game at heart. You can still explore stages to find hidden items and also fight bosses after clearing all the areas of each world. Boss fights require even more skillful paint fairy usage. <laughs> I keep using paint fairy. In addition to creating a path for Kirby, you can also use your rainbow lines to block enemy projectiles or create a buffer to keep Kirby from hitting harmful obstacles. At the same time, you'll also need to be even more mindful of your ink supply as it becomes easier to run out of material for drawing lines, which potentially makes Kirby a sitting duck or puffball, <laughs> whatever your preference. In addition to the main campaign and its bevy of unlockables to search for, the game also features a challenge mode. As its name implies, the mode serves up several challenges that require you to clear various mini-stages in order to earn the requisite medals. Examples include nabbing all the stars or killing all foes within the set time limit. It's a hectic exercise that can prove to be enjoyable, especially when playing with a second player. Say, a 10-year-old cousin who keeps shrieking and laughing as you try to beat a challenge mode time limit. Why yes, I happen to have a 10-year-old cousin. <laughs> in fact, co-op play is a nice addition that adds an extra layer of fun to the game. In addition to providing a fun experience for friends and family, having a second player also helps ease the difficulty a bit. Yes, I just used the word difficult in a Kirby game. See, thanks to its drawing-based control scheme, Rainbow Curse isn't quite the cakewalk that most traditional Kirby games tend to be. Part of it is stage design, which strategically places obstacles in the most inconvenient spots. Another reason, however, is the fact that you move Kirby via scribbling lines, which is inherently not as accurate as manually controlling Kirby himself. It certainly works fine for the most part, but there will be times when you'll draw a line that isn't quite where you want it, sending Kirby straight into a spike or something. Fortunately, you can use new lines to block or redirect Kirby too, but mistakes can get a bit frustrating during the game's tougher sequences. Another issue is how the reliance on drawing pretty much means you'll be looking at your Wii U tablet for the bulk of the game instead of your TV, unless you have a second player, of course. Overall, however, Rainbow Curse is another solid entry in the Kirby series. If you're looking for a game to play with kids and family, or simply want to indulge in a charming platformer that's different from most entries in the genre, Rainbow Curse will be for you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a man card to track down. <laughs>